Brighton just haven't been good enough in this game again. Moist ball isn't working. This is an awful result for Swindon. It, it looks like three defeats in his first three games for Jody Morris. The worst start of a Swindon manager that I've ever seen. It's, it's been an appalling start for Morris. Three defeats in his first three games. Um, in, in the entire time that I support Swindon Town, that's that's never happened. It's the worst start since Ify Anora to a managerial campaign. Jody Morris, I don't know what the fuck he's up to. You can't be. What the fuck is? He's not a. Uh, he's not a manager. He should be playing football manager back at home. He's not good enough. He's not good enough. I suppose the big question we have to ask is: Should the manager go? Swindon Town and Chelsea, two football clubs inextricably linked throughout the years. In the 90s, there was the legendary England international Glenn Hoddle, who became player manager of Swindon Town and took us to the big leagues. That's right, he got us promoted into the Premier League. Let's not really talk about how well we did when we were there, but Chelsea then swooped in and took Glenn Hoddle from us, where he brought through a young man by the name of Jody Morris, who played for Chelsea in the late 90s and got his debut from Glenn Hoddle, at the end of his tenure at Chelsea before he took the England job. Fast forward a couple of years and in the 2006-07 season, my first season as a season ticket holder at Swindon Town, Dennis Wise, another Chelsea legend, took the reins at Swindon Town. Gus Poyer was also his assistant at Swindon at the time, another Chelsea legend. They did incredibly well for Swindon Town as well, taking us all the way to the top of League Two before departing for Leeds United, but it didn't matter as we were ultimately promoted in third place at the end of the season. Jody Morris, as you'll remember, given his debut at Chelsea by former Swindon Town manager Glenn Hoddle, has now taken his first ever managerial job at the county ground as manager of Swindon Town. Now, he also wanted to bring in as his assistant Chelsea under-18s coach Ed Brand. But this deal has really kind of dragged on for about a month at this point. Latest news is that Swindon Town are actually trying to loan their assistant manager rather than actually get him from Chelsea outright. It's a bit of a sticky situation. No one really knows what's going on, to be honest. But today is a very, very good day, as after a very poor start to his Swindon Town career of three straight defeats, we have finally won, beating Salford 2-1 away at the Peninsula Stadium in a massive game between two teams chasing the playoffs. Now, it hasn't really been a great start, as I mentioned, for Jody Morris, uh, losing his first two games. The first one, not really his fault, a 2-1 away defeat at Newport County, where we had a man sent off early on in the game. The second game and third game were very much his fault, however, as we were appalling at home against Doncaster, hit with two quickfire goals in the second half, losing 2-0, and in some ways much more disappointing against Sutton, against whom we led at Gander Green Lane for most of the match before conceding in the 85th and 88th minutes uh, to somehow lose the game. Check out my vlog, which is my previous video, to see more about that one. Um, but we've finally won today, and that's the main thing. The first impressions of Jody Morris then, obviously it's not been fantastic, given that he's lost three of his first four games, but he is trying to play a style of football that isn't really related to League Two most of the time. He's come into Swindon, he's, in most of the games he's played, has tried to play kind of a dominating possession style of football. Um, in most of the games... Weirdly, except for today where we actually won, we have dominated possession against the other teams we've played. Playing out from the back, a lot of short passing from the goalkeeper to the centre-backs. At some times, it's been too much against Doncaster. We were overplaying way too much, inviting on the press that we weren't then able to break through. And it's caused us a lot of problems. Even against Salford today, we continued with this tactic and it almost cost us in certain situations, even though we did hang on for the W. So first off at Swindon Town, he started with a 4-2-3-1 formation, which tried to hang on to the ball in midfield and create chances for Charlie Austin, the lone striker up top. More recently, however, mainly through necessity due to injuries and suspensions, he's had to go to a back three, switching to a 3-5-2 using wing max to create from the flanks. 
The problem with the 3-5-2 that Swindon Town fans know all too well from the previous manager, Scott Lindsay, who did try and also play this formation, is that it's not direct enough and it doesn't often give you enough chances in the final third, which is obviously the most important area of the pitch. Against Sutton, this cost us greatly as we weren't able to create a lot of chances. Sutton did, they went direct and ended up with the three points. In most of Swindon's games so far under Mice, we've actually created very few chances to score and very few shots on target. For example, today against Salford, even though we did win and scored twice, we only actually had one shot on target, as Elliot Watt deflected into the back of his own net from a Darcy cross to give Swindon all three points in North Manchester. This will obviously be a problem going forward as Swindon Town fans mainly fell out with old manager Lindsay because of these very reasons that he wasn't being exciting enough, wasn't creating enough in the final third and ultimately wasn't scoring goals. We did then have a brief period with interim manager Gavin Gunning where we went goal crazy and Swindon fans were definitely expecting more of that from Morris but he doesn't seem to have gone down the same exciting attacking route favouring a more passive and steady approach. I worry that Jody Morris, having never played at this level and never managed before, that he really understands the league. At Derby and when he managed Chelsea, those sides weren't really known for being incredibly tactically astute sides and you do wonder if he has the tactical nous as the main man in charge. However, it has been reported um, through the press and through speaking to players in the media that he is a top quality coach and you would expect that given his background at Chelsea and particularly with his assistant Ed Brand who's been a coach for many many years within the Chelsea youth setup which is one of the finest youth setups in the world. So given a full pre-season I think he could create something pretty special in Wiltshire and if it goes right we know that we'll be seeing a fast free-flowing attacking form of possession based football which is what we all ideally want to come and see. But unfortunately for Southern Town fans, this could take time. And I do think, as I said after the game at Sutton on Tuesday, that I think we're basically writing off this season. I don't think the board really want to admit this, um, but this is definitely going to be a stepping stone season. Get the right pieces in the right places and build for next year, which is obviously a great shame as after our playoff campaign last season, we did, many of us, expect that we'd be pushing to go one step further this year. Um, but the playoffs aren't gone, everything's still in the mix. We did see some surprising results in League 2 elsewhere today. For example, Barrow upsetting Bradford, beating them 1-0, and Stockport beating Stevenage. So it's a league that anyone can beat anyone in. It's a very interesting league, so who knows? We're only four points off the playoffs now after today's win, so hopefully we can conjure something up. Elsewhere in League 2, it was the battle of the former Swindon Town managers. Scott Lindsay, who recently departed Swindon to take the Crawley job, went to Leighton Orient, the league leaders managed by Richie Wellens, who of course won League 2 a few years ago in that Covid interrupted season with Swindon Town. It ended 1-0 to Richie Wellens and Leighton Orient, as you would expect. They're probably promoted as champions at this point. They're already on 70 points. They are flying well clear of Stevenage in second place. Unfortunately for Crawley, it does drop them into the relegation zone as fellow strugglers Hartley Paul managed to claw back from a 2-0 down to draw two all away at AFC Wimbledon. Former Swindon Town player Leon Clark coming off the bench for Hartley Paul and also another Swindon Town player, Diang Yayasimi, scoring for the hosts. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Please like and subscribe if you want to support the channel and I'll see you next time. Up the swing, let's go.